Because of the time when I went to work uh, here in about 36, uh, the man who ran the dressing department, Johnny Fisher, had worked in the mill since he was 12. Mm -hmm. He'd never done anything else. and uh, He was the last of the Mohicans. Uh, Johnny Fisher was a fine old man who was, as I've said, the head of the warp dressing department. He told me he never felt old till his grandson retired. <laughs> uh, but you know, he started in at an early age, and I suppose he was married when he was before, well before he was 20. He had worked here the whole life. A sweet old guy. When I went to work, everybody got 25 cents an hour, and that seemed to be pretty standard. The superintendent at the mill made 100 bucks a week for himself to keep. Mm -hmm. I always thought, my goodness, if you had that kind of money, what else, what else would you need in life? Right. <laughs> Remembering back in those days, and I remember those days pretty well, when uh, working in the mill was a different experience than just a job. Everybody here in those days, a good many people didn't own a car, you know, bicycles, or they lived around mm -hmm. here. And there was a community of guys who worked in the mill who, as you know, were many times like Piro, third generation people who hadn't had other jobs. And you know, these guys were really so skilled. The, they were in every department, there were people more skilled than any college graduate I ever knew. And when the day came when those skills were no longer employable someplace else, because the changing between 1950 and 1960 was dramatic. Do you realize that in 1950, everything anybody wore from the days of the caveman was a natural fiber? Yes. From the days of wool, skin? Well, the only fibers that there were, and the only thing anybody ever wore, had to be woolen, cotton, flax, silk, or Birds. leather, yeah. I guess, would be about it. That's hard to imagine. And in the 10 years between 1950 and 1960, when they invented nylon, in 1950, I saw my first non-wool garment. An enterprising chap had made a, a coat out of a parachute. And it was, a, we all laughed at that. It rustled when you walked, you know, <laughs> stuck out from your body, so it didn't drape at all. And we thought, this will never go. <laughs> 10 years later, there wasn't a wool coat in any J.C. Penney store in the country. Isn't that amazing? That the thing that had been just such a staple, the things that we did so well here, the things like a, just a standard red and black plaid that everybody wore. Or we, we had a contract at one time with the standard service stations, right. and we manufactured that navy blue jacket that uh, like a navy pea coat. Everybody wore it, and you could manufacture that piece of goods with positive knowledge you were going to have a market on it later on. But uh, unfortunately, that's what changed so much. And when we finally went out of business in 1962, I certainly wasn't the first one.